Namaste, dosto. So, another day. This is video 45. Are you still watching? I'll keep making them, but they're not going to be very interesting if you don't ask me questions. So I was at the shops there yesterday, and I got a present. A Cruella de Vil mug. I'm sure coffee tastes much better out of it, thank you. So, on to business with the dilations and thing. Last night, we did oestrogen gel. We go to bed. We woke up in the wee house there. We a terrible mess. Uh, we got a bit over juicy in the night there now, even with the thicker liner. So we had to go and clean ourselves up and get changed, get some new knickers and etc. So it's just one of those things. I think some days you're, you're in full flow and some days you're easy on. Who knows? So the dilation this morning. Not too bad, a little bit tight getting started, but once we were going, we were going. Um, achieving depth seems to be becoming a bit of an issue. I think it's part of the healing process. Uh, I've been managing six and a half. I think it's creeping down a little bit there now, yeah? But we'll keep working at it. Uh, when we get the resistance, we're putting a bit of pressure on there now to try and maintain so whether that's right or wrong i don't know let me know in the comments what your thoughts are okay yeah we're doing something interesting today i've got a well it's sort of sort of like a class so on the facebook there dr umang is doing all you need to know about liposuction and body contouring now i'm very interested in the body contouring so let's see how that goes so it was very informative the liposuction and body contouring with dr umang it was well worth viewing and answered some of my questions and so we'll keep looking at that sort of thing as we go as we go so now we are we are dilating again we are returning to our baths I had a little issue earlier. I was have, having a bit of a look there now, as you do. And because the swelling has abated, I was able to see a bit internally. And I saw what I thought could be a little skin tag or something. So I sent a picture off to Priamed. And they've sent it on to Dr. Umang. Uh, that, there's a possibility it could be a little bit of infection or something. So we want to get that squashed as soon as possible now. So we've restored the baths. And after bath, obviously, we'll get everything nice and dry. And then we'll put a bit of cream on there and see how things develop over the next couple of days now. As far as dilation goes. Entry is not really an issue now with the new technique of the breathing out and the letting myself melt like ice cream we're slipping straight on in without any fuss we're struggling a bit with depth I won't lie we are struggling a bit there but we're applying the pressure we're doing our twisting left and right we're doing our staring the porridge part we're doing our up and down our left and right we're doing every direction we can think of and we're keeping that upward pressure to get the depth and hopefully it'll just keep on keeping on this all part of the healing process i know i know you do lose some depth as you heal but not if i can help it <laughs> uh, every girl needs that little quarter inch or half inch extra you never know <laughs> so welcome back to top dime international yeah once again, we're having a little bath. Now, let's carry on with the stories I was telling you about my life. I touched on seeing guys and stuff and eventually moved on to girls because the lack of intimacy, yeah? Something that I only found with girls. I don't mind seeing 
I think he's quite good at being a kind of lesbian. Well, being a girl, what would you call it? But then again, transsexuals can't really be lesbians, can they? You see, I know I touched on this earlier, but here's how it works. For me, as a transsexual one, maybe not for you, but works for me this way. I'm not gay when I'm with a guy, because I'm a girl. And I'm not straight because my body had male parts. Similar. I wasn't straight when I was with a girl, because I'm a girl too. But I wasn't a lesbian either because of my birth defect, the aforementioned parts. So I'm not gay. I'm not straight. I'm not a lesbian. Then what am I? I'm something else entirely. Anyway, moving on. As time went on, the presence of the poison that my body was making, testosterone, also meant I could now perform with that ting between my legs and complete the illusion of being a boy. But this didn't really work for me. I soon developed alcohol dependence syndrome, which had a great numbing effect. I kind of got through the days by drinking and blurring it out. Didn't make it go away, no. Feeling of wrongness persisted. Even in a blackout binge. So I was on a hell to skelter to hell because I really couldn't be me. I couldn't take being him. They said to more booze, drugs, suicide attempts, self-harm, deliberate drug overdoses. I even tried to castrate myself on more than one occasion. I got tattoos as a mask to hide what I was carried on taking all kinds of random female contraceptive pills. I begged them off people or bought them in pubs and clubs until eventually I got myself locked into an abusive relationship for over 20 years with a girl. Oh please don't misunderstand though now. I was in love. At that point there were good times too, really good times. But let's be honest. Isn't that how all abusive relationships start? I suffered financial losses, which I'm still paying for to this day. Physical violence, sexual abuse, and mental abuse. But being in a male body, nobody cared. When I reported to the police, they even admitted if the boot was on the other foot, I would have been in a prison cell. But because I was male bodied, they were going to do nothing. The funny thing is, my then partner ended up under my professor friend for PCOS, polycystic ovaries. This is a terrible affliction by the way, and I wouldn't wish on anyone. We chatted a bit then too, albeit covertly. Sadly though, my friend the professor is no longer with us to see that I finally got there. Well, that'll be doing you for now. So, I love you. Bye-bye.